Well, I, I'm Maurice Sergi, I'm the chairman of the Centre for Policy Studies, and I'm very honoured that um, I'm working with the most brilliant think tank director <laughs> in the country, if not the world, um, Tim Knox. And he, what he's doing here in the CPS, particularly with that Thatcher conference, which was an amazing success, has, has been marvellous. None of this is possible for us or for any human being. We can't exist without friends. So, dear friends of the CPS, it's wonderful to see such a distinguished group. Thank you all very much for coming. In return for coming, I can um, provide you with a great uh, gift, which is that we are about to hear from the man who The Guardian described as the ambassador extraordinaire. <laughs> and it is true that in terms of the, the illustrious group who have been our ambassadors in Washington, Robin does um, stand out in a most yeah, extraordinary yeah. way. Yeah, yeah. And he's going, to, he's going to talk to us in a minute. I, I just want to say, before I start, that um, in accordance with the companion to the procedure of the House of Lords, uh, it's very important for a, a member of their Lordship's House to declare an interest before speaking. Therefore, I do know how to declare a financial interest. Now we're talking. My financial interest in Robin and what he's about to say is this. I have bet, I did bet, many of my friends that the combination of Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton would bring about the long-awaited and much predicted Israeli-Palestine peace settlement. Well, this would bring to an end all of the conflict between the Islamic countries and the West, and the world would be very happy. So I made this bet several times. Unfortunately, the, the, um, so confident was I that I bet that the loser would take the winner out to dinner in the restaurant of their choice, that's reasonable. But I added in my, in my confidence, anywhere in the world. <laughs> <laughs> so I now, I now have to decide, on the, which I'm going to do on the basis of the speech, whether to give up or go for double or quits. <laughs> Hillary as president. But Robin's, Robin's, this is a wonderful book, Robin's last book, which as you all know is called Fighting with Allies, and Robin um, opened it with a, that wonderful quote from um, Winston Churchill. The only thing worse than fighting with, ally, with allies is fighting without allies. <laughs> and Robin understands the relationship between Britain and America better than anyone, and he's in a better position to comment on what might be the outcome of the next presidential election and what that will mean for America's ideological place in the world, which currently um, is not clear to any of us. So we are going to learn a huge amount. It's a tremendous treat to hear Robin on this subject, which is perhaps the most important subject in world politics now. And if I may present, Lord Rennick. Thank you very much indeed. And could I really thank uh, Morris, Tessa, and the Centre for Policy Studies, and you, the director, for so kindly offering to host this event this evening. And if I could thank also my publishers, Bite Back, who published this book very, very nicely indeed, I can assure you that if you buy it, the best bit in it are the photographs, which are really wonderful, <laughs> and depictions of Hillary in all her various phases. Uh, my favorite Churchill quote, Morris, is slightly different. My favorite Churchill quote is, the United States can be relied upon to do the right thing in the end having first exhausted the available alternative. <laughs> I have to tell you, I promise you, that this remains as true today as it was when he said it. Um, why, why write a book about Hillary at this time? Well, it's fairly obvious, really, that um, you know, the, 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 a couple of biographies, very good ones, of uh, written seven or eight years ago, but none of them cover the, you know, the most important period in her life in many respects, which was her service as Secretary of State. And that's what this one tries, uh, tries to do. Now, everybody here, of course, I'm sure most of you firmly believe, unlike everybody else in this country, that you know all about Hillary already. But not many of you know, I think, I suspect, who was the first presidential cam candidate she threw herself into campaigning for. Any answers? Barry Goldwater. Correct. But not many of you would have got you asked for it. She started, <laughs> she started as a Goldwater girl, you know, she evolved from there on. Feminist first lady of, of uh, Arkansas and then uh, Washington. And we, I was in Washington, we were in Washington when she arrived, full of uh, zeal, 
and confidence and so on, knowing nothing about Washington and how it worked. And, you know, to put it bluntly, she crashed and burned in a very spectacular way, actually. And many people would have been so downcast by that, they would have given up, but it's not in her nature to give up. And you know, she reinvented herself on a regular basis and continues to do so to this day and has evolved into something. Hillary Mark II, an elected, you know, senator, secretary of state, etc., is a very different proposition to Hillary Mark I, as you you know, I think most of you uh, would agree. Furthermore, um, <clears throat> contrary to popular belief, um, she does have a sense of humor. When the <laughs> new head of MI6, his, his, when he was, just as he was appointed head of MI6, John Soares, his wife Shelley posted some pictures of him on the internet in a bathing suit. So when he met Hillary, as he, he bumped into her at the United Nations, what she had to say was, nice legs. <laughs> <laughs> She's actually um, more, much more of a human being, close up and personal, than she might appear from a distance. So will she run? She's running already. You know, you don't eat, especially if you're Hillary, you don't, um, you don't go eating steak fries in Iowa unless you're running. So the decision isn't you know, whether to run, it's whether to stop running, actually. Can she win? Absolutely, she could win, for sure. I mean, all the polls at the moment would say that if the election were held tomorrow, she would win by several percentage points. That's two years away. Is she a shoe in Absolutely not. A lot of things could go wrong. She, you know, she, in terms of who could beat her, the short answer, uh, to some extent, is she's always capable of beating herself, actually. On the Republican side, it's not so easy because the, the Republicans are divided at the moment between the Tea Party, who call the moderate Republicans rhinos, Republicans in name only, whereas my friend Mitch McConnell, the next Senate Majority Leader, refers to the Tea Party as the Taliban. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyhow, I will leave it there, if I may. It's impossible to predict the election at this point. Right now, she has a better chance of winning than anybody else. She is an interesting character. It's an interesting story, the way she has evolved. At least I hope you'll find it so. And I'd like to thank, again, Morris, the Centre, and my publishers for printing this book at this time. Thank you very much. Who wants to start? Okay. Or will I? No, go ahead, please. Hello, yes, yeah, 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 sure. Well, if you talk to people in the, in the city in particular, it r really worries them that the uh, America has turned, if you like, not exactly anti-British, but neglectful of the British. And this manifests itself most particularly in a sort of aggression towards British financial institutions and businesses. What's your sense of her approach to that subject? Well, she, she, Hillary is an, un an unreconstructed Anglophile. You know, she has a lot of connections here. Um, Bill Clinton used to bring her over here. He proposed to her here and so on and so forth. She turned him down, by the way, very sensibly at the time. But he did <laughs> persist until eventually she agreed. Um, but that doesn't mean that she's going to do us any great favors. You know, it's, that's not the way it works. I mean, you are measured in America by your contribution. How much can you help? And she, she, she described the other day Angela Merkel as Europe's greatest leader, you know, from her perspective. Uh, that's, that's, that's correct. Uh, but on, she, she is, <clears throat> in foreign policy, she would be a very effective ally for us. She's, you know, this book describes the, the absolutely dreadful decision-making processes in foreign policy in the Obama administration, with the president not really wanting to do foreign policy, remote, detached, uninterested, etc. And Hillary, <coughs> and two friends of mine, Bob Gates and Leon Panetta, pressing for you know, actions to be taken, uh, most of which eventually were, but, but pretty late in the day. So she would get on just fine with the British government in its foreign policy dimension, though not, I fear, with Mr. Ed Miliband, because she was absolutely horrified by the vote of the House of Commons against taking action in Syria. Uh, she doesn't agree with him about Hamas and Gaza, uh, among other things. And she's new Labour to the core rather than old Labour. In fact, there's one lovely moment in her memoirs where she says, you know, I was so pleased about Tony Blair, new Labour, same as new Democrats, 
Then I switched on my TV and I saw the people in the Labour Party conference addressing each other as comrades. <laughs> absolutely horrified by that. So she's no great leftist. But in terms of financial regulation and all of that, the Justice Department, the securities and so on, I can't expect any great relief from her or indeed from, from you know, the alternative. I mean, if Jeb Bush uh, became, became president, he'd be a very good president, by the way, but I don't see him either stopping these regulators, whacking I institutions. Now, you know, I, I, I still work part-time for J.P. Morgan. Nobody has been whacked harder than J.P. Morgan. But we were fined $11 billion dollars for sins committed by Bear Stearns before we bought them. And you know, there was a wonderful headline in the Wall Street Journal saying, Uncle Sam robs US bank of $11 billion. So that's, I'm afraid, not very likely to change. There's a question at the back. Um, yes, I've known Robert since 1970. We used to play toes together. So I hope he won't object if I ask him a very difficult question. Would he agree that one of the most serious problems facing the world it's a current situation within the Middle East, where the Sunnis and the Shias hate each other the way the Protestants and the Catholics did in the 15th and 16th century. <coughs> Does he have any thoughts, if he was the American Foreign Secretary or the British Foreign Secretary, on what steps the West could do, for example, not supporting Israel so blindly, getting Iran back into the, um, the diplomatic arena, uh, has, has he got some thoughts on how we can solve this appalling problem? Well, I'm not sure we can solve the problem, but we can do something about it. I mean, uh, Hillary, by the way, is a much tougher proposition than President Obama. If you don't believe me, read the prologue to this book about her dealings with Pakistan and Osama bin Laden. Um, you know, Henry Kissinger, uh, who's a friend of hers, um, launched a huge attack on the, on the Obama foreign policy system um, about a month ago, where he said that if you're a superpower and two of your citizens are beheaded on live television, you don't wait five weeks before you do something about it. You know, you wait like five hours before you do something about it. And the, the polls all show in America that the, you know, the population agrees, uh, agrees with him. So Hillary, if, if elected, and indeed any Republican would, you know, any worthwhile Republican if elected, would be likely to be much tougher about dealing with ISIS, much firmer about dealing with Putin in, in Ukraine, and so on. Uh, that you can expect, and I think that will happen almost automatically, because the, the US body politic will insist on it, okay? and certainly she would insist on it. Michael. Um, Robin, to speculate a moment, if she becomes president uh, early 2017, we will be entering the last leg of a hard-fought referendum on Europe. Where will she hope it will come out? Right, well, she will hope we will end up staying in Europe, purely for US national interest reasons. She, you know, she thinks that inside Europe they have some worthwhile allies, uh, notably us, the Germans, and so on. She wants an outward-looking Europe. She wants a Europe which builds bridges to, to the United States and so on. So purely from <coughs> her perspective, she will say, and she will urge Merkel and others to reach some sort of compromise with us. However, if you actually ask her, what do you think of the European Commission? How do you feel about the Brussels bureaucracy? What are your experiences <laughs> dealing with them? Her reaction will be very much like that of several of those of us present here today. You know, she can't stand them, actually, and she finds them you know, really seriously complicating uh, life in general, protectionist, and then she's worried about the European economy stagnating, uh, as it is doing. So she's got plenty of sympathy for the, for the we've got to reform this system by whatever means we can approach. At the end of the day, she will try to help keep us in it, but if we actually did have to exit, which is a pretty dramatic option, goodness knows if it'll come to that, she would then want, I'm sure, to have the closest possible continuing relationship between Britain and the US. Just. Um, Robin. At our conference, General Petraeus gave a very interesting talk mm -hmm. on America becoming self-sufficient 
and, and to some degree protectionist with Canada and Mexico <coughs> and sort of actually leaving out the rest of the world. Now, whether that's the case or not, that's what he was foreseeing happening. What, what do you think about this um, EU-American free trade arrangement? I mean, linking into what's happening in America and forward thinking in America. Is, would Hillary or anybody else be really interested in that? Yes, absolutely. And in fact, the Republican victory in the midterm elections, I and mean, Bob will I think agree with this, but the Republicans winning the midterm elections have increased the chances of getting these trade these trade treaties through, both with the Pacific, both the Asian Trade Treaty and the the EU US trade treaty. And that obviously depends on the EU also making <laughs> sufficient compromises. But that they will do. And she she's very committed to that. I and mean, then one of the battles you know, Bill Clinton fought was about was in favour of NAFTA. She would be better, it wouldn't be difficult to be better at dealing with uh, Congress than, than, than President Obama is. You know, he's, he's a very remote figure. He's, n he's no good at schmoozing at all, doesn't do it. And you know, it's very difficult to get things done in Washington without that kind of activity with Congress. As you uh, know, the Benghazi affair is a great uh, issue in America. Uh, it happened on her watch, and the administration did everything possible to avoid having any transparency mm -hmm. in the issue, and, and now the Republicans are going What Did you look deeply into this issue? What conclusions did well, you Well, there is a chapter about Libya and Benghazi in the book, and, uh, you know, it's from her point of view, it's a sort of tragic outcome, because she, she um, uh, took risks to support the Europeans in saying we need to intervene in Libya and get rid of Gaddafi. Um, all of that was achieved, and of course the result has been a monumental mess with the, the country in a, in a terrible state. So <coughs> it hasn't worked out as she had hoped. On Benghazi, um, they, when, when the, um, <coughs> this incident happened and the US ambassador was killed in the attack on the consulate, uh, there was a sort of cover-up, definitely, which was White House driven to suggest that this was a spontaneous demonstration and so on rather than a terrorist attack and you know Susan Rice went on television to say that and paid the price for it um, but Hillary you know actually if you're Secretary of State there were there were serious mistakes made that lay down in the State Department if you're Secretary of State you don't actually see the telegram saying we need more we need additional security in Benghazi and there's no evidence that she did um, and there's been, you know, been a huge number of inquiries, including there's a massive first-class Senate Intelligence Committee inquiry led by uh, Senator Feinstein, and you know that that's the definitive story as far as I'm concerned. There, she, you know, she didn't see these telegrams. She, she said, "I'm responsible." Obviously, well, I think the definitive one is being led currently. Sorry. I think the definitive one is currently... Being well, there's another one, yeah. And, and the, you know, she, she's going to be harried from pillar to post, because, you know, on the one hand, Petraeus, by the way, is a great fan of hers, but Rupert Murdoch has very patronizingly assured him of the world that he can live with a Hillary presidency. <laughs> That's not going to stop Fox News attacking her every day of the week for the next two years. Yeah. Robin, as we've shared uh, a lot of history together, um, mm -hmm relating to uh, the possible election of Hillary as president, it seems pretty dependent on Obama's stock rising. Why is Michelle Obama so timid, or why is he so stupid not to draw her in? She's the best thing he's got going for her. Is it that she's burned by the Hillary experience plunging in too hard when Clinton was elected? Because she has all the humanity that Obama lacks. Yeah. Why can't Michelle play a role to get the stock of the De Democratic Party up higher before this election happens? Well, I think you'll, she will end up playing a role because when uh, Bill Clinton asked him, you know, said, well, are you going to support Hillary? Um, he actually is reported to have said, and I believe it to be true, well, what about Michelle? <laughs> so, <laughs> so you can see her running for office in Illinois at some point, I think, but, you know, very, very likely uh, to happen. I think presidential elections are different. I mean, you know, Bob is the expert in the corner here. But first of all, everybody here complains, or, you know, the press complain about deadlock, gridlock in Washington. Most Americans like gridlock in Washington. 
you know, they, they see that the, 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 Ronald Reagan used to see two threats to America. One was Moscow, the other was Washington. <laughs> <laughs> they, they're quite capable of voting both ways, as, as you well know. Mm -hmm. the, the, uh, and, you know, the Republicans always win among white males, but there are not enough of us left to go around. You know, there just aren't. You know, she, she was a miles ahead among black Americans, Hispanic Americans, and women because of the position on abortion. So, you know, she has as, as good a chance and better than most people or than other people do. Robin, mm. um, what part do you expect Bill to play if she uh, continues to run. Will he be an asset or a liability? <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, that's an interesting question. But, but the balance of power there has shifted decisively in favor of Hillary. You know, the, the last time around, he, he actually messed up her campaign by getting very agitated and uh, you know, attacking the press for attacking her uh, in, a, in a very curious way, since he's such a politically savvy animal. Now, this time round, everybody knows that if she gets there, he ends up you know, attending funerals. You know, he'll be vice president, sort of, in a way, you know, uh, special envoy, etc. Uh, he won't be given a post in the administration, and so on. So I think that that issue has sort of faded. In, and, but also in this midterm elections, don't forget that Bill Clinton was by far the most popular um, Democratic figure because he was a successful two-time president, you know, and he he was asked to campaign by all these candidates in these elections, not one of whom wanted the president to campaign for them. And Hillary will, you know, have to put more distance between herself and Obama, which you know will happen and has already happened in foreign policy. Bill Clinton's health is a big issue, isn't it? Lurking in the back. Lurking. Well, you know, there will always be some danger of some bimbo eruption at some point, but we can... <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think that's what she had in mind. So many times before. <laughs> I think it will, the waves will be smaller this time, probably. <laughs> Thank you. Shall I ask the last question? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, Robin, you've been in the Foreign Office for so in the last administration, the Bush administration, um, which has gone into history in all sorts of not perhaps very good ways, one could say about it that, well, that at least it did have a view of America's place in the world. Yeah. And there were people who were evil people, and that America was a good um, place, and that there was a strategy, which was um, that freedom and democracy is what we want, and we're going to drop freedom and democracy onto all these poor Arab countries, like food parcels. Hmm. And then there's going to be a reverse domino, that was the strategy, as you well know. The reverse domino in which democracy will spread from one Arab country to another. Well, I mean, we all now know that was, uh, it's, been, it's been calamitous. Yeah. But, um, and it was mistaken and wrong or wrongly executed, who cares. The, but now there is literally nothing. Mm -hmm. Do you think that, and we're all, we're, we're all distressed all friends of America and families of America are distressed by that. Do you think there's a hope that Hillary Clinton, if she was elected, would address that question of America's moral <laughs> leadership, ideological leadership, which is now so absent? Yeah. Well, the short answer is yes. I mean, she believes absolutely that that's what America is all about. And she, um, <clears throat> if, you read, if you get this book, you'll find a chapter in it called, headed Superpowers don't get to retire, and that's an article by um, you know a well-known writer called Robert Kagan, and she might have written it herself. She says you can't opt. He says you can't opt out. You know we you know whether no world problem can be solved or even contained without the United States getting involved in helping to uh, to contain it. Now you know you also make the point, however, that they tried to drop democracy on all these countries. Uh, Kissinger, you know. Is brilliant about this. <laughs> he says, you know, it's one thing to kick the, you know, to oust the Taliban if they're hosting it on Qaeda. It's quite another to introduce democracy to Afghanistan, which he describes politely as a Sisyphean task. And one of my favorite Washington quotes was from Catherine Graham, because one day I was talking to her about Henry, a mutual friend. And she said, some people say that Henry doesn't care about human rights. It's not true. 
Henry hates human rights. <laughs> <laughs> Henry is a Hillary supporter because he thinks that she will reassert US leadership and support for allies around the world rather than causing you know, great concern in the Middle East as he did by just, you know, as the present administration did, by just dumping a long-term ally Mubarak, you know, like that. And that caused great sort of, you know, that the, the Gulf rulers, the Saudis and so on, were furious and started making their own dispositions. So would she try to correct that? Absolutely, she would. She still has a sort of slight, you know, democracy tendency. <coughs> she would still talk the talk about exporting democracy to these countries. But, you know, she has learned the hard way, first of all, don't, don't put large you know, US forces into the Middle East. And secondly, that if you're trying to support you know, human rights or democracy, there are distinct limits to how much you can achieve, actually. Mm. Well, Robin, could I say that um, you've given us all, in all that you've said in your, in your speech and in your answers, you've given us all hope in what might happen and be the result were Hillary Clinton to be elected. We, we will say that the, the proof of the pudding will be in the eating which is when, the day, on the day of her election as President of the United States, she announces that she has appointed Lord Rennick as her chief policy advisor. <laughs> <laughs> <Thank you. laughs>